into the ocean. That's a bit of a shame, Ainsley said. Starving to death's a shame. Drake, Ainsley, and Handon turned to see that this was spoken by a newcomer who'd slipped into the doorway without anyone noticing. He wore a khaki utility uniform, boots, and a sidearm. Two deep furrows of scar tissue ran down the left side of his face. And in zombie warfare, air superiority is about as useful as nuts on a nun. Drake said, This is Master Gunnery Sergeant Fick who commands the Marsoc team. It was the same guy who had escorted them on board. We met, said Handon. Fick nodded. I wanted to check out the new hotshots myself. Find your comfy racks okay? Pillows nice and fluffed for you? Fick stood, removed a stub of cigar, and concluded, So you motherfuckers be advised. Field reports indicate that the difficulty of making a headshot on a foxtrot is about like the difficulty of hitting a regular Zulu, squared. They're coming fast, they're running and jumping, and with the implacable intention of turning you into a flesh-eating freak who will kill and eat your own friends, probably in seconds. Under those conditions, only complete dead-eye dicks, who also have pure liquid nitrogen running through their goddamn veins, can make that shot, which had better describe you fucking smart Alex. It was an outbreak. Bad. Their colonel had to get in an Apache and rock at their own goddamned hospital. Jesus Christ, nuts on a hot plate. You're not gonna tell, Alpha? We are moving to save the ship. Everything else is secondary, including and in particular us, understood? The two Brits nodded. Fick paused and seemed to grow thoughtful, then looked to Martin. Well... Not you, actually. You're the only son of a bitch who knows how to stop this crazy thing. Okay. On me. Go, go, go! Uh, with respect, and pardon me speaking frankly, but the air wing commanders are going to be about as helpful as a dick sandwich on this one. Oh, and good thinking, Master Guns. Semper Scrotus, Fick said, saluting and exiting. Drake didn't need to be told what that meant. Always on the ball. Is it airworthy? Wesley asked. Fick shrugged. They're still trying to unfuck themselves and figure that out. Fick headed toward the open hatch, radio in hand. Uh, you're breaking up, sir, and I do not copy your last. Repeat all after, now listen to me, you son of a bitch. And then he turned to Wesley and tossed the radio at him. Brady said he didn't think life was worth living without good coffee. As if they didn't all have a lot more important shit to worry about. Or maybe they didn't. Maybe good coffee was as good as it was going to get. Charles 1-0, Mortem 1, solid copy. That you, Master Gunny? Yeah, old Gunny Fick here, live and in person. Told you we'd come and get you, you suicide squad sons of bitches. It made the work of Fick and his sheepdogs all the more indispensable. In World War I, the German soldiers fighting across from the Marines and Bello Wood had nicknamed them Teufelsunde, or Dogs from Hell. The nickname Devil Dogs had stuck across a hundred years of wars. Sheepdogs, Devil Dogs, Fick thought absently, settling back into his spot. Whatever. When he hit the flight deck, he had another furious discussion with the pilots, mostly about occupational health and safety. He wasn't sure if he only won the argument due to being much more heavily armed than them. But he didn't give a shit either way. Anyway, even if Alpha were down there, Fick wouldn't have expected them to just be sitting on the tarmac with their faces hanging out. He toted a positively ancient M16A2. Sure, it was a relic of Vietnam, but it made him happy. And okay, some guys complained that it jammed a lot, but those were the same shitheads who didn't clean and maintain their weapons to an exacting standard, and if it was okay enough for the poor bastards in the Yadrang Valley in 1965, then it was good enough for him. Fick pulled the bite tube from his camelback and stuck it in Longfoot's mouth. The dazed man took a long suck, swirled, and spat. Cheers, he said. Uh, fuck you, Fick said, yanking his hydration tube back. 
Why the hell did you light us up? Master Gunny Fick did not enjoy being shot at with extremely large caliber weapons. Being in a plane that was trying to land at the time didn't make it one bit better. Fick trotted up to the hulking bomber, which he could already see had an ugly-ass bullet hole in it. His nose also wrinkled at the sharp tang of aviation fuel, and he gave the mechanic a look like he'd just been offered a shit sandwich on a plate with turd garnishes. As the bullets flew and the dead ran forward, got shot, and hit the ground, Fick thought that he might have preferred a shorter lecture on the history of aviation fuel. The other bad news was that since the fueling station was to their east, making use of it was probably going to mean pushing their perimeter out further in that direction. Oh well, we'll screw that goat when we get to it. On the one hand, it was clearly getting hairy at this position. Then again, he was no help to anybody if he was dead, and he'd be a positive menace if he got undead. We've got customers, Gunny. A whole bunch of hungry-looking meat lovers are coming through the door from the north, south, and east, and we're the all-you-can-eat buffet. Fick recalled the famous quote from legendary Marine Chesty Puller in Korea. We're surrounded. That simplifies our problem of getting to these people and killing them. Unfortunately, in this case, the people surrounding them were already dead.